Moina is one of the leading houses of trunks and leather goods. Moina is a house with very deep roots. Born at a time of significant societal revolution and changes around living and travelling in Paris, France and Europe. Founded at a time when France and the rest of Europe had done away with horse and carriage at the turn of the 19th century. Welcome to Creme de Luxury, the place for an exceptional luxury lifestyle. It was this revolution that spawned the concept of bespoke luggage trunks and travel objects, exuding the spirit of French adventure which high society prided themselves on. This formed the foundation of the House of Moina, resulting in new product innovations at Moina that catered to this growing market. Moina, however, is also a brand new entity because of the rupture in its history from the 1970s to 2011. Moina has been making trunks in Paris since 1849 and have prided themselves on their premium craftsmanship and unique designs, whilst choosing to be a quiet and subtle brand remaining under the radar. Moina was not just another leather goods and luggage maker, but an innovator and even pioneering at times. Moina was also revolutionary as one of the first French luxury fashion houses founded by a woman as part of a partnership between Pauline Moina and the Columbier family. Pauline arrived in Paris at the tender age of 16 from Savoy and made her living selling travel goods at the city's operatic district. Pauline was the only woman trunk maker in a male-dominated industry and she truly brought a feminine flair to the male-dominated universe of trunk making in an extraordinary, enterprising and unique way. In addition, Moina were innovators in catering to the travel bag needs of women too. Pauline Moina was a visionary, providing top-of-the-line trunks and travel accessories to high society. Parisians in the 19th century acclaimed for her craftsmanship and designs. At a time when luggage making was a rather dull industry, Pauline's trunks were exciting, liqueured and tanned with alluring colours. Pauline also used vibrant skins to transform what would be a mundane and standard trunk making craftsmanship. Octavie and Francois Colombier were trunk makers from the Faubourgs, the inner suburbs to the north, and after coming together in 1849, they opened the first Moina Ateliers and then the first store in 1869 on what was then Place du Theatre Francais, now called Place Andre Malru with Moina soon becoming their official supplier. The boutique was located at the heart of Usman's redesigned Paris and followed the construction of the Avenue de l'Opera in 1876. It was positioned at primary place at number one. The headquarter is now the oldest shop on the avenue. House Moina was more or less an institution and stayed operational for well over a hundred years until it ceased production in 1976. Moina was well known for its traditional craftsmanship and skills in making made to order luggage and travel goods in addition to their designs, pieces and technical innovations for automobiles which included making its trunks lighter and waterproof. Moina patented its first inventions from packaging materials in 1854 and became the first trunk maker to use the vegetal gum sourced from Indonesia called Gutta Percha to waterproof its trunks and packing boxes. Showing their aptitude for technical innovation, Moina went from strength to strength. In 1870s, Moina debuted the wicker trunk, also known as the English trunk, or Moina trunk, a trunk crafted with a lightweight structure consisting of a wicker frame covered with a varnished canvas and leather trimming for travel between France and England. The trunk was studded every 7mm instead of the industry standard 16mm, which gave the trunk a lightweight but sturdy structure. It was very popular with travellers wishing to circumvent weight restrictions placed on railway travel. Moina also produced a number of security mechanisms for its trunks and patented latch bolt locks. These features ensured added security and strength to their trunks. Moina were also frequent participants in the World's Fairs since 1867 and Moina took part in the Exposition Universelle in Paris in the 1900s and in Brussels in 1910 where they were awarded medals and special prizes at 
Ghent in 1913. It was not until the 1925 International Exhibition of Modern Decorative and Industrial Art Deco Exhibition in Paris that Moynat became par excellence and was distinguished as one, if not the leader of their field, winning a number of gold, silver and bronze medals and was formally recognised for its avant-garde innovation and exceptional creativity. Moynat was also awarded the, the Diplôme d'Honneur for its red Moroccan automobile trunk a distinctive leather patchwork trunk decorated by blue palm leaves outlined in studs, which had since become one of the signature codes of the house. Moina was also most definitely a pioneer in the development of ladies' handbags and were one of the first to introduce a range of women travel handbags in the early days of the railway. In 1878, they debuted the Mignon bag made in chamois leather, followed up by a popular shoe bag Pauline Moyna was highly respected amongst the elites of the Parisian performing scene and it was during the Belle Epoque era that Pauline Moyna struck up a friendship and found a confidant in spirit, heart and mind in renowned actress Gabrielle Rejean. Rejean was a rising star and a muse to many designer houses, a woman of character known for her wit and humour that charmed the world, making her successful not only in Paris but also on the stages of London and New York in the early 20th century. Gabrielle Réjean was the epitome of the Parisian natural beauty and embodiment of independence. Gabrielle later became the inspiration for several custom creations from Moina, including some of their pioneering handbags, all which imbued the Parisian spirit and attributed to the commercial success of Moina, cementing the house's status in the arts world. Gabrielle inspired one of her first handbags for women created by the Moina Maison. In 1903, the Rajan bag was made in her honour. It was also the first bag to pay homage to a celebrity that is still available today. 1905 launched another significant chapter in Moynard's history, with an ongoing partnership and eventual friendship with Art Deco artist Henri Rapin, when he was appointed as the long-serving creative director. Henri can be credited with the success of Moynard from 1905 to 1930. Henri's artistic legacy was truly sealed with the monogram he designed for Moina, known as the Toile in 1920, which rapidly became Moina's distinctive signature and signifying house code. The motif was created by alternating lines of the letter M. The motif was originally introduced to protect the house from counterfeits and forgeries, which was common practice for luggage and trunk makers at the time. Henri Rapin also oversaw the compilation of Moina's product catalogues and the model trunks that were presented at the Universal and International Exhibitions. Henri Rapin's other graphic creations for Moina included themes of travel, poetry and sometimes comical elements. This all culminated in their wins at the 1925 International Exhibition of Modern Decorative and Industrial Art Deco Exhibition, which propelled them to international recognition. Moina continued to thrive for decades after Pauline Moina's passing. The collaboration between Pauline Moina and the Colombier family started with Francois and continued with his sons Jules, Ferdinand, Edmund, Louis and Maurice and excelled under the direction of the Colombier grandsons as they used their entrepreneurial spirit to take advantage of the increasing train speed and the rise of automobiles which inevitably increased the number of travellers and consumers requiring trunks. During its history, Moina filed numerous patents covering everything from lightweight luggage to waterproofing and it has designed trunks for every mode of transport from limousines to train. But faced with the challenges of production, a rapidly changing automobile industry and the development of new materials like nylon and plastic, the acclaimed and esteemed luxury trunks and luggage maker ceased production and manufacturing and went into hibernation, closing its boutique at the Place de Francais in 1976. Despite these unfortunate events, Moina trunks were still widely used for travel by the elites and crossed the Atlantic to all corners of the world. Fortunately for Moina, the story did not end there. In 2011, Moina was relaunched, marking a courageous new chapter in its rich history. And shortly after, Moina reopened with a flagship store at 348 Rue Saint-Honoré and with subsequent boutiques opened in various locations around the world, from London to Hong Kong, Tokyo, New York, Singapore and Dubai to name a few. However, 
unlike the other LVMH fashion houses, Moina still remains under the radar and without the buzz or hype. Moina is yet again catering to fashionistas who are looking for minimalistic designs without the logo mania or over commercialization. Moina is for those who want the quality, heritage, and premium craftsmanship like the brands like Hermes without the noise. When Bernard Arnault acquired the rights to the Moina brand, his vision was to reawaken the powerhouse and resurrect the spirit of Moina instead of just creating another brand. To do this, he appointed Guillaume Davin and Romash Nier as creative director. Guillaume Davin had been a collaborator of Bernard Arnault for many years at Christian Dior and as vice president of Louis Vuitton, Japan. Ramesh Nair is an Indian-born designer trained at the Institut Français de la Mode, Paris, whose professional experience includes working with Yohi Yamamoto and then with Christian Lacroix. His biggest highlight has been working with Hermès as a senior designer in the early 2000s, where he said to have worked alongside Martin Marighella and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Hermès was charged with a goal to stay true to the core values of Maison Moina while reinterpreting the house for a chic, modern audience. Ramesh had the great challenge and enormous task of bringing Moina back from the dust and resurrecting the house to be the once celebrated legend of luxury leather goods that they once were. But before Ramesh could settle in the design language of Moina, he had to do immense research about what Maison Moina was about, in addition to reviving the traditions of Moina's savoir-faire, because it had completely disappeared. There was very little material, artifact or traces from its illustrious past that remained after the brand ceased production. No original employees or artisans to inquire from, but they had the good fortune to meet with many people who knew craftspersons. At its very foundation, it was evident that there was a clear creative direction meticulously sketched out more than a century ago by Pauline Moina. Nair became focused on creating timeless, elegant bags that honoured the Moina codes and the level of craftsmanship on which Moina was originally built and worked incessantly to recover the house's lost codes and introduce fresh novelties. Ramesh came through the Parisian workforce and carefully assembled a team of skillful and talented artisans who had the potential and credentials for the Moina level of craftsmanship and had the acumen to bring his designs to life in the Moina workshops. Here, every wooden frame is built leather tanned to exact specifications and details like hinges and latches are created from scratch. All articles are crafted using the Moina way in trunk making. The majority of production is located in the south of France. Moina makes about 30 bags a week which are all individually crafted by hand with each bag taking an estimated 3 to 7 days to make from start to finish by a single artisan instead of an industrial or assembly line. However, this is only the actual production stage alone. Once the artisan has all the necessary materials assembled, but if you take into account the fact the leathers are still at first designed, developed, produced to specification, as well as the different pieces, it can take as long as three months to have all the essential materials ready. Every piece of Moina leather is individually chosen, textures are studied, patterns are centered and seams meticulously stitched in order to find the best way to use them piece to construct each bag. Ramesh and his team were eventually able to put together a range of products finished in the finest leathers, offerings for men and women that fall into three distinct categories. In addition to personalization services ranging from hand-painted initials and made-to-measure bags, the bags consist of men and ladies handbags, clutches, shoulder bags and travel bags. The small leather goods collection consists of flat pouches, card holders, organizers, wallets, and more. The hard sided luxury collection consists of trunks, briefcase, vanity cases, signature concave based trunks inspired by the limousine collections of old. The products in all three categories come in a variety of shapes, sizes, colors, and textures. Moina always works closely with their clients on their requirements, always bearing in mind that Moina codes and expertise designing the object in a truly Moina way. When a client requests a custom bag, there is no catalogue or styles of colours or linings that the clients can reference or choose from. Each component is handmade. 
including the metal parts and closures, which are all specific to each trunk or bag specification. Custom-made orders are in essence made from scratch for each client. It is not simply a question of assembling previously prepared components. Depending on the kind of object in question, the time taken to produce a product varies widely. Moina keep their pricing and purchasing opportunities discreet because each piece is handmade. Moina's two most popular models today are the Pauline and the Rejan, which sells for about £4,000 upwards each. Depending on the leather, hardware and exact specification, it can be more. Moina does list its bag offering on its website and displays some of the available colours. But to find out the exact price or purchase an item, you'll have to send an inquiry in-store at Moina's handful of boutiques or inquire via email. Today, Moina forgoes marketing gimmicks. They do not have seasonal or collections like the fashion calendar. With its modest retail footprint and low-key communications, Moina remain discreet. Although murmurings of the resurrected Maison Moina has been spreading, beginning with its flagship boutique at the Rue Saint-Honoré in Paris, and an e-commerce site with storytelling and its first image campaign. This is seen as a vehicle to reach a new generation of customers. Moina has acquired a loyal following for its artisanal approach based on its unique hut savoir-faire. Artisanal savoir-faire, exceptional materials and refined hardware are hallmarks of Moina, but it's Moina's distinctive silhouette that set it apart from other luxury leather goods brands as it was also a benchmark for travel items. Moina does not try to attract the masses, they choose to remain niche. For Moina, the one-to-one -one interactions, messages and experience, as well as the word-of-mouth travel, remain the most important things for them. Even though Moina does not have the cultural impact and brand recognition of other big names, for those in the know, Moina still inspires awe and brilliance. Moina has an admirable air of exclusivity. With its rich history as one of the oldest, most prestigious leather goods company in the world. In 2020, Lisa Atia took over as Chief Executive Officer and Nicholas Knightley took over as Artistic Director. He was the former Designer Director for Leather Goods at Louis Vuitton after having worked for Mulberry. In this changeover, Moina are keen to shed its institutional image reinforced by its ladylike bespoke top handle bags. Moina is moving to emphasise more of a lifestyle attitude. Moina's aim is timelessness, excellent craftsmanship and quality. It is this balance between these elements that elevate its prestige. Moina embodies a consistent pursuit and quest for hand-finished quality that is becoming an increasingly rare commodity in today's largely industrial consumer-driven marketplace. The style of Moina is very classic and elegant but still quite distinctive. The shapes of their buckles and design silhouettes add a unique spin on the classic handbag for over two centuries and Moina continues its pioneering spirit through the mastery of traditional hut mannequinery and innovative techniques. Their pieces are finished with exacting detail and uncompromising savoir-faire. Moina is a brand for those who appreciate minimal, subtle and fine workmanship, discreet elegance and attention to details and are passionate about rare and timeless objects that combine functionality with beauty. Moina are for those luxury enthusiasts that want rare, understated, quiet luxury without screaming of status in order to distinguish themselves from the large crowd. For Moina, in a world where anyone can buy a handbag off the shelf, rarity is valued and exclusiveness gives you more esteem when you carry a Moina handbag. And that concludes our deep dive into the Moina luxury leather goods and trunks maker we will see you in the next video thank you and goodbye from creme de luxury